at such a young age, you know, trying to figure out just how to get money was like what my world revolved around so mm-hmm. that I could try to make the move out here. And I was like, damn, I just wish that, you know, like I understand now why uh, some people's parents like take care of them to a certain age and stuff. Because at, at some point it's like, yeah, you are making your strong, your kids stronger. But at, at the other point, it's like I will never get those years back. And like my whole life just revolved around survival. Like I feel right. like I was in survival mode for so long to the point where like even now as an adult, I have to sometimes like, you know, I just start the last couple of years started learning to like be able to spend money on myself. Big Boys Big Neighborhood, boy. beautiful day in the neighborhood, Please. ladies and gentlemen. We've been waiting on this one, man. Callie yeah. Uchi's in the neighborhood. Ooh. Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. Just found out that she's been living out here for a while. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. She was like, Big, I saw you one time and, you know, I just didn't want to say hello to you. <laughs> you believe? So you've been, you've been living out this way for, for years now. Yeah. I heard that. And, and where did you move in from? I moved from Northern VA, like right outside of D.C. Okay. Damn. Yeah. I heard that. Now, as far as when it comes to, to, to music. Right. Mm -hmm. There's some people that feel like there's a lot of introduction for you. Mm -hmm. But as far as how much you've been putting in, if people say overnight and always say, man, it's been a long ass night. You know, (laughs) absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So had you always been into music Was music? And and I I ask others, it was music like in your household. Mm, I would say for me, it was always like my escape. Yeah. Like I always was that kid that just had her headphones on and I was just in my little world. Yeah. Um, I played in jazz band. I played saxophone. I played piano. I always been into writing. I took like poetry competitions really seriously. When Early I on? Forth. Yeah. How I was old little. were you when you started playing like sax? Mm, probably like, I want to say I was probably like 10. Did that start in school? Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, jazz band. And, and they don't have a lot of these programs anymore. But I started like with trumpet, mm. and the same way too, Cali. For me, music was a getaway. Yeah. You know, it was my escape. And and even growing up, it was like eight of us in the household. Mm-hmm. I never had my own room. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But I could put on headphones and just go. Yeah. And then with it being, you know, I mean, it's a real, it's a real lifestyle. You know, you don't have money, you don't have this, but you have wish, you have dreams, and music had always been my getaway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I could literally lay down with headphones at night during the day and just go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that was, exactly that's what it was. it was for you. I grew up in a similar situation, like you know, full house. So I didn't have my room. My room was like cousins, aunts. Yeah. You know, it was like my room was like the girls' room. My brother's room was the guys' room. They had my uncles, everybody. It was like when you came to the United States, you passed through our house when you were like getting on your feet, like all yeah. the family members coming to the United States. Um. So it was very much. So you had like that. The, the halfway house, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> where, where people come in like, hey, we just going to lay here. Yeah. But, but, but we, we grew up the same way. We always had the boys room mm-hmm. and the girls room. Yeah, room full of beds. Yeah. But yeah. Co- Colombia was like that too. I grew up in Colombia as well. And it was very much like our house was like cousins, aunts, uncles, you know. Hey, man, all. I didn't get my own room till I got in radio and moved out. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a two bedroom house, Callie. You couldn't, a two bedroom apartment. I didn't know what to do with the second bedroom. I would literally <laughs> be like, dude, I got a two bedroom apartment. You know what I'm saying? I had a 35 inch television. You couldn't tell me shit. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I, I have made it. So music was always kind of your getaway. Aside from being your getaway, how do you start to create it? You just you say you started writing poetry. Was it early? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was always really into writing poetry and just I was just that little kid that I was in my own little world singing songs and you know in the corner like in my own imagination and coming up with stories and coming up with songs and um, yeah, I think I just always like from the beginning of when I learned to write, I was writing songs and writing stories. Where was it just kind of not not just your escape, but were you the only one in your house that enjoyed music and wanted to create? And were you were you writing at anybody else? Mm-hmm. No, nobody else in my family um, is like an artist in that sense. Right. We're coming from a family that doesn't understand that. Could they understand what your so-called dreams were? No, they were yeah. really against it. Yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I come from an immigrant family. So like for them, we they, hear work, you like. know? Yeah. It's like, it was all very much about, they don't consider that like real work. And mm-hmm. then also it was just hard for them to wrap their, you know, they didn't have the opportunity to, um, go to, you know, my dad got like a fourth grade education in Colombia. Mm-hmm. So it's like for them to be like, why wouldn't you take advantage of the public systems in this yeah, country here. and the public school systems and, um, go to college. They wanted me to go to college and do all that stuff. And I always knew that college wasn't for me. Right. Um, from a very young age, like I didn't even 
try to go to college. Um, essentially, I feel like it's for people. It's it's for some people, and it's, but it's not for right. everybody. And for me, I always felt for me, I always felt that our school is like pretentious in a way. Like I, I always felt it wasn't for me. I was like, I want to actually be learning this shit on my own, yeah. figuring out what works for me. Like I don't want anybody to tell me how to make music or how to create. I'm just gonna like actually go, get out here and like start working what was the battle with telling your your family that because you got to think if you do say you know immigrant family it's almost like man we came here so you don't have to go through yeah exactly what we went that through. was their yeah that was their yeah. perspective but i um and it's and, and also too kelly that could be out of love too no yeah absolutely. because with me i would also you know and you don't want to stunt your kids growth yeah but you know out of love sometimes we do give people different or bad <laughs> advice yeah you and know what i'm saying i've always been a very strong believer that the only person who gets messages about your life is yourself yes ma'am. nobody else is on your path so they're not going to intuitively know what's the best thing for you to do like you're the only person that's going to know that so i've always strongly believe that so i've always very much been able to tune out what everybody else is telling me i need to be doing and that was at an early age yeah and then also when it came to college like i just felt like college debt has like such a grip on and even at that time you know that it was like early on in the times where it was like very much like as soon as you graduate from high school you gotta go you know they wanted me to go to the community college la 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 I'm like, I went to that community college probably for like 15 days. All it made me want to do was smoke cigarettes. <laughs> right, 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 right. And mess up your credit. You know yeah. how they be on campus. I'm like, man. I'm like, fuck, everybody out here smoking cigarettes. Doing nothing and you went to the community college. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. see, I went to community college as well. And, I, and I, I just, it wasn't for me. I, right. I knew, like I said, like I didn't even apply for any colleges because I knew. It was Did like, you go for everybody else those 15 days? It was more like I wanted to see if it was something that I would right. even Let be Let me at into. least try. Yeah, and I was just like, no, like I don't even think I made it past a week. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, no, this is absolutely not for me. And um, yeah. Were you still doing music? Not still doing, but were you trying to like juggle everything at the same time, mm-hmm. like yeah, real I was, life? I was and- making music. I was making music. I had my own like laptop at that point, and I had got my own like um, you know, USB mic, and I was making songs, and I had a little camera, I was making music videos, so it was very much like from the ground up, I did it all myself. There's so many people that want to be in the business, you know Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? There's so many people, like, it's gotta feel, for one, you do something, you're doing something that you love, you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's easier to do something when you love it, and whatever comes with it, it's like, okay, I'll take those accolades, I'll take this, you're gunning for something, but you enjoy what you're doing. And while you're doing something that you enjoy, there's also real life that come with it as well because mm-hmm. there's no bill being paid. There's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything is kind of like this real struggle that I'm pretty sure has to happen, correct? For me, my mindset was always I would rather be hungry and do what I love to do and go hungry as long as I need to go hungry and get it done than to be like miserable doing something that I hate doing. Yeah. So. For me, it was it was never really like about money, mm-hmm. um, and I never thought about like the industry or the business. You right. know, I figured all of all of that out like later. Yeah. Actually, cross that road I when you get there. It. Yeah, yeah. And then I started realizing like, oh shit, like people do this a whole different way. Like yeah. people really develop themselves as artists, and they have teams from the beginning, and they, you know, like I really. Can't, I really like built this shit from the bottom myself and after seeing like how other people did it I was like wow I, I wish I had gone about it a different but way but you know what that Mm-mm. that path yeah, you know what I'm saying the oven versus not and not even the microwave but that oven or that slow cooker and that's those things where it's like your tuition into the school of experience mm, yeah. you know what I'm saying and the best way to learn is actually on hand and that's why you even see now when you say and 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 anybody that go to college college do your thing no, absolutely. Do your thing. Yeah. But also you're seeing now where so many people are saying, man, it takes a lot of time to do something in college, then get out, have the debts on and so forth. So sometimes if you know your dream, put all that into yourself. Yeah. I feel like college is for people like if you have a specific um thing that you want to do that's like you right. really requires college. You know, yeah, like, like being I a doctor, want my doctor lawyer, to go to college. Yeah, being a doctor, <laughs> yeah. being a lawyer. I don't want know. him to be like I learned this shit on TikTok. <laughs> you know, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, oh yeah, like no, I, just, I definitely uphold like education. I always tell my fans like get your education. But yeah. if you want to do something when it comes to arts, I personally don't. I personally like see it right. as a scam. Right, and that was for you. For me, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's for you. So when do you feel like? You start not, and not making noise like like you made it. But how hard is it for people to actually hear you? Um, I would say, I mean, I would say what I didn't have my first like 
commercial song until Telepatia, which was on my last record. Which is crazy, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, really, that's that's my second album. But it's like how I was telling you how I like started from the bottom. It's like, you know, first I put out a, a, a EP, which a lot of my fans think of that as my first album because mm-hmm. that was how my fans got introduced to me. It was called Por Vida. Mm-hmm. But it was completely free. I never and charged for it. you got to figure it. that's what, what, eight years? Yeah, that yeah. was that was like, I think that was like 2015 yeah. when I put that out. Um, I believe I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I think so. So that was my first like introduction really as like, you know, putting a real project together, but it was like, it was free. It wasn't my debut, whatever, right. la la la. It took me another three years to get together my debut album, which was 2018 called Isolation. Where are you at during that time though? Because I was in LA at that point. And, but there's real life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, and I'm talking about like support. Where are you living at? Are you on the friend? You know what I'm saying? Friends couch? Are you? you yeah. Know? When I first came to LA, it was definitely very much that. I mean, even in VA, like towards the end of my living in VA, I was, you know, just like figuring it out, moving around. Mm-hmm. I don't really like have anywhere to go. Um, I got kicked out of my house as a teenager. So for me, it was like I was just figuring it out, figuring out what to do and staying at friend's house, mm-hmm. sleeping in the car, doing whatever I needed to do. Damn. When I came to LA, I had sold my car. I had saved up enough money working at the grocery store that I felt like, okay, I have enough in my savings that I'm just going to go to L.A. That's where everybody wants to work with me. That's where all the producers and whatever. Anybody who wants to work with me is reaching out to me from L.A., so I need to go there. So I took the money that I had saved up. I literally just left. Um, I feel bad for the people that worked at the grocery store with me because I did not give them any notice. Oh, but I was like, hey, man, oh, but you know what? <laughs> they don't give you a two-week firing notice either. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying? No, like, like I, don't, I, I, I can't recall when somebody be like, hey, you know, this show, we're going to fire you in two weeks. Yeah. You know, but you, yeah, but you had to step I had out. My, I had my dramatic moment where I got, where I, you know, got off the cashiers, <laughs> got off from yeah. behind the cashiers, and I'm like, I'm leaving. Yeah. And I just took that walk. And but I just what if home. you didn't? You know what I'm saying? Like, or, or when you say, when, when is the right time? And sometimes the right time is now. Absolutely. And how old are you when you leave the supermarket? I don't remember exactly how old I was. I know I was still in like the teen years. Yeah. I was definitely before 19. See, that, when that I right there is scary. Absolutely. Because yeah. just being a young woman, um, there was a lot of people that definitely especially like as somewhere that I didn't have that support system of a home mm-hmm. at that age. Um, there was a lot of people that t- tried to take advantage of me. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, so. so it was really scary when I first came to L.A., you know, living in different places and being around. I had to leave different places because I had to realize like it wasn't safe for me or like people had ulterior motives or, you know, and especially at that that time in your career everybody that's trying to reach out to you like they want your publishing or they want to sign you right. or they want they want something out of yeah, you it's a lot of snake work early mm-hmm. on too yeah. and, and then then also you it's, it's crazy because that's when you could possibly run into some of the worst characters absolutely you know because you, you you're almost you know you're young and mm-hmm. you want it and you could be believing you know what someone's telling you or this person know a little bit more or this person can get me connected to this person yeah I I was honestly, I've, I've never been a like, ooh, I need to network and I need to, I've never been that type of person. Right. I've always been of the mindset that like my work is going to speak for itself and I don't, it's, I've never been like a who you know type of person. Like I've always felt like I, I love that you nobody. worked hard though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm not even just talking about in the music when you was like, yeah, I saved up my money from the supermarket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and to love what you're doing that much to leave because I've been in radio for years, Callie, and with me, I've never had to leave for a radio job. Mm. So anytime someone tells me like, man, I moved out here for such and such. I'm like, bro, that right there already shows me how bad you want it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And how hard it would be for somebody to try to deny you what you're destined for. Absolutely. I always say nobody can stand in the way of your destiny. And that's the main reason why I was never like I got offered all types of stuff, you know, and I was just always like, you know, I'm going to I'm going to make it on my own regardless. And people literally laughed at me like nobody believed in me. I felt like especially at that point. And something else like how you were saying about like saving money I felt like at that age because recently I tapped into my my old Facebook messages like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was laughing so hard I, it was just off the nostalgia like I was just looking like it was almost like reading a diary because I was seeing like when I would be writing my friends like this happened today or you know come over here meet me over here and it was unlocking so many memories for me but I was noticing so many of the messages something that made me kind of like sad was I was like so many of the messages was like me trying to get money or me talking about at such a young age you know trying to figure out just how to get money was like what my world revolved around so Mm -hmm. that I could try to make the move out here 
And I was like, damn, I just wish that, you know, like I understand now why uh, some people's parents like take care of them to a certain age and stuff. Because at, at some point it's like, yeah, you are making your, strong, your kids stronger. But at, at the other point, it's like I will never get those years back. And like my whole life just revolved around survival. Like I feel right. like I was in survival mode for so long to the point where like even now as an adult, I have to sometimes like, you know, I just start the last couple of years started learning to like be able to spend money on myself and mm. like buy something nice for myself or like do little things for myself, take vacations. And you know what's mm-hmm. crazy about that too, Callie, is that doesn't go away. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's almost like it, it's a gift and a curse because even with me, it's like I I could get something, but I'm very hesitant mm. or I'm thinking like, like for me, I always keep kind of a uh, a broke mentality for, yeah. for, for for lack of a better word. When you're in survival mode for so yeah. long, you feel and, like almost guilty to, yeah. And, and and sometimes people are like, man, what's your motivation? What's your motivation? And to keep it real with you too, like I had a great mom, so on and so forth. So I saw that, but I'm motivated also by fear. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm motivated by well, fear. Like and, afraid and, of failure? And not even just failure, not mm-hmm. afraid of failure. I'm more like, okay, I know what it is to sleep outside with my entire family. Yeah. I know what it is to live in a motel. Mm. I know what it live is to live in a mission. I know what it is to get food delivered to your house from the church and live in the church and all those kind of things. Everything that kind of built me to what I am today and how I hold and save and how I take care of people. You know what I'm saying? And how I, you know, I could be the dream maker because we didn't have a lot of that. Yeah. So it is where I'm like, OK, yeah. You know, I'm motivated by fear, but it keeps me going. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, it keeps me going. And when you say that you you got thrown out the house, right? My son is 16. Mm-hmm. I couldn't imagine my yeah. son, you know, being being out there. Yeah. You know, at such a at such a young age. You know, and this world, man, this world eats you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's scary. I really didn't. When you're at that age, you really think that you know everything yeah. and that nothing can touch you and that you're unstoppable. Right. So I didn't even. It, it didn't even cross my mind like how much danger I was actually in. Right. And when you situation. look back at the Facebook messages too, that had to be <laughs> different looking back at that now and how vulnerable you were. Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Like I was just, I was doing everything. I was selling clothes. Mm-hmm. I was making mixtape covers for people. I was making music videos for people. I would be like, oh, you want this? You want that? Like I was just. So when you come to LA, like how did you get, how did, how did you and Dog get together? You and Snoop? Was that here? Oh, no, you know what? He actually reached out to me while I lived in VA. And I had, at that point, I had come to LA for the first time on a trip. Actually, someone uh, brought me out here to shoot a music video because I was shooting music videos. And um, so I had come out here to shoot a music video for someone. And that's when I shot one of my first music videos. It's called What They Say. Mm-hmm. And so I shot it out here. And we shot it with the old school. And like, I direct all my videos. So it was oh, like, yeah. so he's seen it. I guess he liked, you know, the style of it. He liked that it felt very, like, L.A. He liked the cars and the girls and whatever. And he loved my, you know, I'm rooted in, like, oldies and stuff. Mm. I've always loved oldies. So that was where I started. And so he reached out and he's like, I love the music, la, la, la. We should do something. And so the next time that I came to L.A., I think, was when I made the move. And that was when I went to, he has like a, he has like a big warehouse. I don't know if he still has it yeah, now, the but com- he had the compound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That was yeah. where I went to. And I went with a couple you of my friends. You should have lived in there. You see how big that damn place is? <laughs> you got some space. Yeah, you, you could have been in there for like at least two, three weeks before you knew you were in there. There was a time that I lived in a place kind of similar to that. But, um, but yeah, he had like a table and it was like all the, we, you know, blunts were rolled oh, out. No. Yeah, 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 on the table. And like, it was cool. We made a couple songs and it was fun. It was, was, was that your first introduction to Snoop as far as like being in his presence? Yeah, that was our yeah. first time meeting and he was just real cool. Callie, how many times did you think you were on? You know what I'm saying? You know how when you're like, oh, dude, this is it. Honestly, I never had that moment. Yeah, I never had that moment. Damn. Yeah. Not even when, like, you get the, oh, we just got nominated for a Grammy. I mean, I'm talking about even yeah. before that. You I know, know but for her yeah. to say that even now, like. Mm-mm. Oh, I never really felt that feeling. Oh, of, you got a whole different mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just feel like. Yeah, I, I guess because I didn't start in the first place for those type of reasons. Yeah, those things is like they're beautiful things and to be proud of and, and everything like that. But yeah, they're not my like purpose. You know right. What I mean? Yeah, you'll pick them up as you go. Yeah, but you're not in that direction to go yeah. and get them. You know what I'm saying? Do you write all your own material? I do. Yeah. Why? 
I feel honestly, music is really personal to me, mm-hmm. and people have asked me to write music for them before, and it just hasn't worked out for me because I'm like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't give you my kids. I can't, exactly, yeah. like it's too personal, and I feel the same way about like people have sent me records before with top lines on it, like, oh, this so and so wrote the song for you. And there's another girl singing, and I'm like. I would never like I could I just could never do it. I could never bring myself to do it. Because had you always been from poetry to writing your own stuff, you that's always been you. Absolutely. So you write more from emotion. I write, yeah, from my own experiences, from my own like I just feel like it's so um my music is so literally catered to me because I write it. So it's like my melodies, my words, they're all from me. That's what makes it more personal. I feel like that's what makes my fans be able to connect with it. Like I don't think it would be the same if it's And was the reason else. why I asked that question is and, and it's a, it's a more specific why I ask, right? Mm. That I wish you roses. Mm-hmm. I was like, even when I was walking down, I was like, man, she had to write that. Yeah. Because it's a it's beautiful anyway. And and there's some great songs that people put their heart into that they didn't write. Mm-hmm. But I was also like, if, if I if I understand the interpretation and just looking at the lyrics and listening to it as well, that's a song that a lot of people couldn't write. Right. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like th- there's one line where you say, uh, just know my love I gave you is forever yours to keep. Mm-hmm. And that make everybody start to also think about their exes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And and it's like that, that when I say that's a song that I couldn't write, it's not bitter. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But is that the interpretation? Like, like okay, we, we were here. We were good. I don't wish you any ill will. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, for me, honestly, when I wrote that song, that song was more about, like, when I grew up, I was always listening to this song called I Wish You Love by Joe Batan. Mm-hmm. And I always wanted to make a song like that because it's just such a song of pure, you know, releasing somebody with love. It's, it's such a purity to it. And I feel like it's not enough of that in the world right mm-hmm. now. And so that was the main reason why I wrote the song. Damn, I hear that. Yeah, because even with radio, man, our biggest segments are the cheating ones. Oh, yeah, or, 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 all or, everybody or wants to talk being about angry, toxic, you know? cheating. It's yeah. like it's very um, that's very like popular, very trendy, and you know the drama. I think chaos. it's all. Uh, I think it's also different when somebody say, "Man, I wish you well." You're like, "Wait, hold on." Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, "Wait, hold on." What do you mean by that? No, I just I wish you roses. Like, I wish you well. You know. Yeah. So talk talk to me about the new album as well. Does it feel like like you had? To, like you peeled off more layers in this because we are getting a position where we're starting to know you even more. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And there's bodies of music now. Do you feel like you have also in the last couple years, you know, grown as not just an artist, but as a person? Oh, yeah. I feel like I, I'm different for, from when I was last week. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I'm constantly evolving and... um. Even like how you said, like even how you said, like oh, we're getting to know you more. This is my third album. It almost for me, it's it's my second album in English because my last album was mm. Spanish. So it's like I feel like I have to work two times harder than someone that makes language and or music in one language, because it's like that was my first. My second album was my first album in Spanish. So my next album is gonna be my second album in Spanish, but it's technically my fourth album. Right. <laughs> so it's is, like, is that by design? Yeah. How you how you doing? Yeah, it I'm just doing well? like English, Spanish, English, Spanish. But that's why I say, like, I feel like I have to work two times harder because it's like I'm writing all the music as well for the Spanish. And so. Wait, um, so not just the 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 words. Yeah. You the, also, the Spanish album is going to be 100 percent written by me. I heard that. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, so. And so you, you don't do like writing camps or other people that sit down with no. you? No. I did um like a production camp one time for Sin Miedo, which was mm-hmm. my uh, last album. And like working with writers, it was more so like. It was more so like since I had never done a full album in Spanish, it was more so like helping, like they would help me with little stuff like, oh, this would sound, let this make more sense like grammatically, this or whatever, mm-hmm. la la la. But now that I got that out of the way, I'm ready, <laughs> like for my second album, I'm ready to like fully write it 100% myself. That's crazy because we're also not in a business, but we're also in a time where we delegate. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, oh, you do this, mm-hmm. you do that, you know, and, and some people are afraid of the hard work. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And not taking away from anyone else. You no, know yeah, how absolutely. they how they their formula is their formula. Because everybody has their own fortes. Like some people are vocalists. Like I've never considered myself a vocalist. Like I'm not and I'm not no Whitney Houston, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like I'm just more so like I've always just considered myself an artist. Um in the full scope of the word. I'm just an artist. And so um yeah, I don't take it away from anyone who's like anyone who's a vocalist or a vocal performer that they prefer to just like show up and have their songs written for them. Like that's for you, you know, it's just not for me. Going from writing and poetry and just falling in love, when do you find your voice? Cuz it's it's different to actually write. 
Yeah. But then, you know, there's some people that are great writers. And the reason why they're great writers and give their songs, sell their songs, because they don't really sing. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how old were you when you when you found your voice? Um, or was there a mm, moment? Well, I, I do remember the first time that I made somebody cry singing. I made one of my aunts cry when I was singing when I was probably like seven years old. Damn. And I would sing for like the kids in the neighborhood. I would sing. But I never thought like, oh, one day I'm going to be a singer because I also went through like once I became a teenager, I became super introverted and I was like, didn't want anyone to look at me. Like I even grew my hair out like over my face so people wouldn't look at me. If you would try to make eye contact with me, I would want to cry. Really? I was like that. Like I was so introverted. Do you know where that came from? Um, I was abused since Mm -hmm. I was little. So I think it was just like I think it was just a lot of my trauma and just like not wanting to be looked at, not wanting to be touched. Um. I just became super, it was it was probably a mix of that and then maybe just also just grow, the growing pains, growing into an adult, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I definitely went through a long period of time where I could not like make eye contact with people and I didn't, I never wanted anyone to look at me. Hey Callie, when you're going through something like that, that's got to feel alone too because now, you know, you hear so much now about, you know, mental health and wellness and mm-hmm. you know you got social media that that could be the gift and the curse but you also feel like you got places and there's more groups you know and mm-hmm. we're just starting to see that even more recently yeah now there's more of a support system out there yeah. for, like, for people that's going through stuff but so was uh, was a lot of that just you solo as a kid and as a teenager trying to d- yeah i never d- talked to anybody um they tried my school they tried to put me in like alternative school and they tried to make me like talk to counselors mm-hmm. Cause they knew like something was up with me, right. but um, I never like really talked to anybody. I probably talked to a counselor like a few times, a school right. counselor. And so, the, is that where a lot of the escape come to with with music and writing? And, yeah, most yeah. definitely. Yeah. And is that therapeutic for you? Yeah, to I this think day? it's definitely my way of like healing, my way of growing, and um, it's just that's how I, that's why I said like how I said like I was I would be willing to just even if I wasn't successful or had the little bit of success that I have right now, if, even if I didn't have that, I would still be doing what I'm right. doing. Cause this is like for it's you first. Yeah. yeah. It's for you first. Then life. we get to enjoy yeah. it. Do you get people that come up to you and say that your music helped them? Yeah. I yeah. love that. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. I love yeah. That. Because you got to think like at some point music was your escape. Mm-hmm. And you're, and then now music- you're helping somebody else escape. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah man. It's a beautiful thing. You, you're doing Coachella. Uh, next month, mm-hmm. you want me to come out with you? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is Don Tolliver coming out with you, or do I? Have he to... is. He's ah, gonna okay. Come out. <laughs> right. I saw him at Rolling Loud, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was gonna do the whole thing where I was gonna put on a suit with some shorts too and just come on out and rock with you. You know what I'm saying? How does that relationship start? Um, we just really connected. Like as soon as I met him, we had a really strong connection. And I don't have, I don't have that with a lot of people. So when I do get that, I value it. Yeah, it had to be different. Because there, I'm pretty sure a lot of people come into your life. Oh yeah, you know absolutely. What I'm yeah, people. You know, I meet people all the time, and it's not it's not often that I make a connection with somebody that like that. Yeah. And aside from the personal side, do y'all like help each other with music? Um, I want to say we help each other. Mm-hmm. I want to say we help each other. We'll play each other music and like right. let each other know like what's our favorite songs. Or right. Is it competition? No, no, okay. never, never. <laughs> what What about when y'all work together? Do you slide them an invoice? Do you say you <laughs> no, know? never, oh, never. Okay. Oh, okay. All I don't right. pay. Fe- I don't pay people, or I don't charge people for features. You don't. If I work with you, it's because I genuinely want to work with you, and because I fuck with your song, whatever. Like, I heard that. Yeah, like when I got on Sad Girls Love Money, like I didn't ask for any money. Like I don't. I don't do That's probably guess. No, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they were like, yeah, okay, you sh- okay, you sure? You because you got to ask your sure twice. You sure? Right. Are you sure? There was okay. probably only like one time that I ever charged for a feature, and it's because I really didn't know those people. And it was right. it was these two guys. I didn't know them. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But everybody <laughs> else. He was like, ah, oh, it's the twenty eighth, and rent is due. <laughs> they, you know? they kept asking me. They kept asking me. So I was like, okay, I do like the song. I was like, okay, I'll do it, but for a fee. Right. Yeah. Everybody else, I'm like, nah, I just do it off of you know love, friends, being friends. I usually work with people that I know in real life. I so, heard that. Yeah. Is it hard to be in a relationship where people know know your partner's name? Uh, being in a public relationship, it, it definitely has its moments where you're like, oh, my no. gosh, I wish I would shut the fuck up. Yeah. Hey, dude, and that's the same <laughs> with me, dude. Like when I years ago when I dated Beyonce, that kind of stuff so, yeah. was just, you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, I had my stardom. Sure. She had hers. You I'm know what sure. I'm saying? So you walk out on the red carpet. Hey, how's Beyonce? You know, like. I never heard a, that before. So because yeah. I, don't, I don't like sharing. No, I've seen it. Yeah, I think I saw a picture of you. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, this is, this yeah. is before Jay. You know, oh. of course yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I, you know, you speaking to Unk right now. You know what I'm saying? I know exactly what 
you get it. You I know exactly it. what you're talking about. <laughs> so, no, yeah, we definitely try to keep our relationship as private as possible. Yeah, yeah. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop asking about it. Okay. <laughs> you know? I, I think I've asked enough questions. Cool. I do have one more though. No, I'm just <laughs> okay. So, so you're doing Coachella, mm-hmm. right? Is this your first time at Coachella? Like, no, I did it one time before. But with your like, name being in bigger like font, tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. It was bad for me. My guitarist, she was like too. You spooked. said it was a huge tank. Yeah, it was a huge oh. tank. It was bad for me. It was bad for me. She didn't show up. The guitarist didn't show up. And so that just like put a whole different pressure on everybody. And then the costumes were all wrong. And then everything was just going wrong. And I had just Damn. fired my manager. So it was like everything was just a mess. She like didn't pass anything over right. And everything was just a disaster. So oh, I'm man. excited to do it the right yeah. time. The right yeah. way at this time. Yeah, it was yeah. a mess. And, and then also, yeah, the, the font is bigger. The support is Absolutely. bigger. You know what I'm saying? And, and now you know exactly how you want to do it. You knew it then. But you know, I knew how I wanted to do it. Didn't come how I wanted it to do it, but this time I'm gonna come correct. Is it crazy when you see something like a Coachella or when you see a, a festival? When you walk out on stage, the people that are there and could cheer you on that little girl that was in 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 the bedroom with the headphones on. Mm, yeah, it's cute. Yeah, I'm, seeing the fans is always cute. Do you see people in the audience? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sometimes I try not to. But why? <laughs> <laughs> well, at a festival, start putting your hair back down. The, you know? I just, I just start looking like into the sky, right? Because really. at a festival, sometimes you can get distracted by all the faces and like, yeah. if someone's really, really hyped, then you. See I like it. to focus on those people, but other people that can be like, the, oh, yeah, that's the vibe killer. And they would just like take you out of your zone, like. Yeah. Hey man, do you also when you when when you get out on stage and you do you you, you see the people, you know you vibing, but do you also get a, a sense where you can't wait till it's over or does the time pass fast? I have had that situation before in the past because my music it's not at, like I have more up tempo music now, but mm-hmm. I like I told you I started with oldies and so it's very like chill, melodic, yeah. vibey, whatever. So sometimes if I would get booked on festivals that it was like the person right before me was like ah like right. raging going up <laughs> and then I come on and then people's like hey how's everybody doing everybody all right? <laughs> yeah like it has to be the right it has to be the right and that's why I learned how to basically like mix my set in a way where it's like I know that this is like this is a festival set like you mm-hmm. know I have to keep the energy up to a certain level I want to keep people engaged I learned a little bit more about like doing festivals do you get lot, nervous no I don't get nervous you have any rituals before you go out on stage mm, I want to say I have those either Damn. what about recording rituals do you have anything that you go to are you a, I got to record in the dark I got to have a candle mm, I do prefer for the light to be lower mm-hmm so I can feel more comfortable. I've never really liked bright light. Mm-hmm. Like this. Do you stay around for Coachella? Like, say, for instance, do you get there early? And do you stay or do you just kind of hit it and quit it? I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, you know why I figured you would? I figured you wouldn't stay around for that. Yeah. I might This time, I might stay for Frank Ocean. Right, Since he's right. going right after New York. Um, but, I mean, it, it really just depends. Usually when I do something, I leave right after. Like, if I do an award show... I'll get my word and leave. If I do a festival, I'll do my show and leave. That's just how I So you're not a part of this so-called machine either, though. You know how some people just love being there? Yeah. It's like how I told you I never, like, even when I started, I've never been that person like, oh, I need to be in the mix. Like, I never felt that way. You know, do you go out? Not Unless you have to. It has to be, like, somebody's birthday or, you know, it has to be something important to celebrate. When's your birthday? My birthday is July 17th. Okay. And what sign are you? I'm that, cancer. Oh, Lord. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, cancer women are different. We yeah. get a bad rep. We get no, a bad no, rep. no. You know what? I've seen a study and they said that people's least favorite signs is Gemini and Cancer. Yeah. Oh, and okay. it's, that's literally She's a Gemini. Me and my different signs. Yeah. Man. Uh, yeah, Gemini's get a bad rep for sure. On Women's Day? And I'm a cancer. <laughs> on Women's Day? <laughs> yeah. She, like, she, uh, Ani's a Cancer. <laughs> okay. Yay. Beautiful yeah. Cancer sign. I think that I think the bad rap come from cancer men. Cancer men, yeah, that's what I've heard. I yeah. have never dealt with cancer men, but like I love my brother Miles, but he's a cancer. Yeah, I heard yeah. the cancer men are difficult, but right. yeah, women were like the best. What you doing for your birthday? I don't know. She probably, I, I, oh, I'm probably going on a trip. No, I love to be somewhere else on my birthday and on like New Year's and stuff. Like, you want like us to go to with you? Somewhere else. You know, we get no. the cabin next to you. She was, <laughs> and she kept that real. Yeah. She was like, you know, no. She was like, and she was like, big. I don't know what you're playing because I really don't want you. I really don't want you there. Like, I don't. I don't want to come out and you. You be there. Y'all will be with me in spirit. You know. Thank you. I will take that. I, I don't. Nobody wanted to go with you anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. We go 
Hang up with you, Kelly. She wally wally. She bang bang. Nobody wanna. So will you have a quiet birthday? Um, it's it's intimate. I never mm-hmm. I don't I don't like celebrating with strangers. Like that's why I've never been into like club culture for right. real. Um I don't really understand the point of like being around a bunch of people. I don't know, like, eh, yeah. like I don't know y'all, I don't want you. Hey man, me. yeah. <laughs> Who are things you? things yeah. can get weird real quick. Hell yeah. Things can get weird real quick. So I don't really like that type of shit. Um, <laughs> I, I like to be like I like genuine connections. Yeah. I like to be around people that like I really fuck with and you know we you know, um, yeah, so it's it's small. When I celebrate, it's definitely, like, small, just, like, my inner circle. Yeah, that's exactly why you said we can't be there. I understood that, You know, too. like, I just yeah. met you guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm sure you guys are great people. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, like, well, grow up. Right some now. of us are. Okay, okay. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, not everybody. We don't need everybody coming to the party. <laughs> you know? And so now when we fast forward and we do see the accolades, right? Mm-hmm. How does your family feel about that? You know? Do they know you famous? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not too sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't right. talk to most of them. I only talk to like a few of my family members. Oh, I heard yeah. that. I heard that. Yeah. Well, that that's less tickets for the festival. It's all you know that. Yeah, like yeah. when I when I go out, like people still invited to, you know, where I'm going to and whatever if they want to come for sure. Yeah, but you and, and also, man, like we have a <clears throat> definition of what certain things are supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's not that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Sometimes it, it, it's just like not that, and sometimes you got to learn how to exist. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think I don't think that is necessary. Like, if people are, you know, um, if, if people are like essentially like not good for your mental health or your life, like I don't think that it's necessary to you keep them around protect just your because energy. they're family. Yeah, you gotta me. protect your. Like, I want to make my own family. That's like one of my biggest goals in life. I really make, though, like I kids, make a happy family. Yeah. Do you do you do you know a number? Of how I many you want? Kids. I want I heard, two kids. I heard Good that. Yeah. Oh, tell Don. Don't tell me. No, trust me. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I was, <laughs> I was just wondering. So, yeah, so two kids. kids I heard that. Boy and a girl. Ideally, I feel like that's the dream. Yeah. But you know, you never know what happens. Really though, do you feel like you got so much work to do first? No, I feel like I could have kids soon. I heard that. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell us anything? No, I'm not. This okay. is not an announcement. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, man, I was going to tell, tell you straight up, it's a radio war war going on. <laughs> yeah, you, no, no, no. If you wanted to say it, believe that. No, yeah. I definitely believe in, like, uh, like I want a traditional family for myself, so I definitely want to, like, get engaged, get married first, and then I we'll talk about it. Do you play yeah. guitar? I don't play guitar. I actually tried. I, ha- I got a guitar one time, and uh, when I was little, someone gave it to me as a gift, and um, because I really wanted to learn, and my friend sat on it, and so I never got one again. Oh <laughs> man! Yeah, yeah I was on was the she, bed, and she sat was on she it by accident. <laughs> no, was no, no, no. She, oh, okay. she wasn't. She was a small girl, but it was on the bed, and we were all hee hee ha ha. She forgot it was on the bed, and she just leaned. Do back. you still talk with her now? Um, every now and then. Okay, she yeah. probably think you don't really f with it because she broke your guitar. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's okay. Yes, yeah, I live. Hey, dude, she probably like, dude, he, she telling that guitar story again. <laughs> like she wasn't even that good. Right, I was just guitar. starting to learn. Like, yeah. I was, who knows what would have happened? Like, I know, I man. Been, hey, man, been somewhere over Jesse here. Reyes is listening. Like, good, I'm glad the guitar got messed up. <laughs> you know what yeah, Je- Jesse Reyes her. is a beast. She yeah. sent her. Yeah, yeah, man. What's your relationship with Tyler, the creator? Um, I would say he's definitely one of like how I was saying. There's so many people that they have ulterior motives when you're a new artist. He's one of the people that was in my life just off pure intentions. Like yeah, never try to talk to me about signing me. Never try to talk to me about publishing. Never try to talk to me about just only had like genuine advice for me. Wanted to work. Looked out for me. You know, um, gave me opportunities and never expected anything from me. So. Yeah, man. Tyler's a very he's different a great individual. Person. He is, yeah, man. Yeah, he's a pure soul for sure. Yeah, he is, man. And I think that's why he continues to win. Like Absolutely. my daughter, well, I love Tyler anyway, but my daughter really loves him. Mm. And there's a different, and not just the music. Like my daughter is also one that connect, for, for me, she connect by soul. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I remember one time we were at this this get together and Tyler was there. And I caught him like talking to my daughter and the conversation was, you could do anything you want to do and you can get on this mountain. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, my God, bro. You know what I'm saying? Then you listen to some of the music, too. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) But no, but dude is an extremely great human being. And you got a great person. You got to think, too, man, like you probably got in your head too, Callie, like some of the conversations when you were just coming up that you was like, okay, I'm not going to mess with this person. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to mess with that person. Cause, and back to Jesse Reyes, I remember her song, Gatekeeper. Mm. That Gatekeeper song, I was like, oh, she, you know what I'm saying? She mm-hmm. knows. And people talk to you different 
when they think you you female or you by yourself or yeah, or you absolutely. want something so bad. No, I think there was definitely a lot of people that they probably assumed that they would never have to see me again, and right. having to see me in certain spaces so many years later, and me knowing what I know about them, knowing that they're you know pieces mm. of shit. Yeah, like there was a couple people that apologized to me actually. Oh, really though? Yeah. What did yeah, that man. feel like when they apologized? Mm. It felt more. It, it did feel regretful. Like I'm not sure that it was really like genuine, but mm. I think it was definitely regretful. But in the sense of like they know, like I would never sit here and do tell alls on anybody because like that's just not the type of person I am. Yeah, I hear you. So um, I don't think that they were afraid that I was gonna say anything about them. But um, they know though. Hopefully they learned their lessons. Yeah, and, and they know. Hopefully they're better people now. Who and knows? what about your relationship with SZA? And SZA is an amazing she's a great human person. being. Yeah, as she's well. another great person. Just always shows love to me always um you know same thing she got on Fuente Mejor she never asked for anything she came to the music video she worked hard it was, we went through the night shooting that she never asked for anything so for me it's like that's I feel like someone I could consider like a real friend Are they, is it tour going on right now or is it kind of spots or what's happening with you me yeah. oh um I'm going to Latin America next Tuesday and how long are you over there 10 days Damn, and then that. I come back then we do Coachella and then I start my North American tour and then hey, I'm man, done for the year is it cra- you done for the what for the year I'm not gonna do any more touring except for maybe this one other thing but it's not confirmed yet and that's by choice yeah I don't like that's to tour. a beautiful choice yeah I don't like to tour I heard that why um kind of similar to the stuff we were talking about earlier like I just for me it's like I just feel like I don't ever feel like I need to do anything that I don't want to do. Right. That's beautiful. And I don't feel like I'm my best self when I'm on the road for too long. So even my North American tour is only like four weeks. Like I told them, like, don't have me out there longer than four and a half weeks. I'm not going to do it. How do you learn that? Because usually early on, I mean, you, you, what? How, however long you've been in the business, yeah. however young you are, yeah. those are like old soul decisions. And mm. when I say old soul is like, I can't do all that. Yeah. I got to protect my energy. You know no. what I'm saying? And I, usually I, I we're also, in go mode. I learned from mistakes as well because yeah. when I first came out, um, you know, I had people around me that didn't have the best interests and they were just mm-hmm. trying to like exploit me and make as much money as they could off of me. And I definitely like did some, I feel like I did more, I, I exerted myself more than I needed to. And I ended up having like traumatic experiences on the road because if things aren't, set up the right way or you're out there with the wrong people mm-hmm. it can just be like the worst experience ever so um now like my last tour it was like the one that i did with tyler it was so comfortable and i was like you know obviously a different level of touring but when i first started it was like you know i was i was touring for a while i was touring yeah. since i didn't even have a project out and those are probably some of the the most and like when i say tuition to the school of experience kind of thing those are probably like the sharing the rooms, the you know, not like, even sharing the rooms, lot. like doing the makeup if, by myself in the in bathroom, the car. not even having a green room, sitting yeah. on, on a table by the side of the stage, waiting. Like, you know, yeah, just a lot of horrible experiences, and um, beyond that, like just not even. I wasn't actually. I was actually going through something really hard for myself. Um, I had actually just. Um, gone through like two different very traumatic experiences and then I was thrown on the road and so I actually wasn't prepared to do that mentally and so um because you know it's a lot like meeting so many different people and then being expected to do like meet and greets cash right. grabs like oh just give us 50 dollars in cash you can meet Kaliujis. like it's like yeah, people yeah. Was doing that to me like having to meet like 50 60 people a night after a show like exhausted and I just had to realize like whoa like I had to realize like this is not this yeah. is not what I want to be doing and you know what I call that too Kelly is I call that sending your representative. You know what I'm saying? It's like as as much as you're going through, you still got to make this person's moment. You know what I'm saying? You got to be nice to this yeah. person and, and not knowing that you could either be crying or dying on the inside. Being exa- yeah, being exhausted, being overworked, being exploited, being, you know, all the things that I was going Did through. Did you ever want to just give it up? Absolutely. Yeah. There was multiple times where I was like, I can still you know um make music and make art and do what i want to do and do it privately i don't need to share it with the world i don't need to be a public figure um but you know i'm here did people just you know how sometimes people could discourage you too where you're like i don't even want to be a part of this if these are the people that i got to deal with you know yeah no yeah the the industry is it's a really rough place and um for me, like how I told you, like I started from the ground up by myself. I never thought about the industry or like mm-hmm. I'm about to become a part of this music industry. Like I never looked at the business aspects. I always just looked at it as like, you know, this is my life. This is who I am. I am an artist. When I look at the things I love to do, they all encompass 
you know, being an artist. I love making clothes, doing photo shoots, making things, making music, making music videos. That was all things I loved to do as a kid. So it's like it only made sense for me to be an artist because I was an artist. I never thought about like the business side yeah. of it, like ever. And so once the business side got involved and like becoming a part of the music industry got involved, um, I definitely learned that I feel like we can all do it in our own way. And I learned that, you know, certain things are not for me. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's OK. I don't consider myself somebody who has the motives to become like a pop star or like be a pop star. And so I don't hold myself to that standard of like I feel like what people what other artists might hold themselves to of like, you know, feeling like I have to do I have to be like nonstop, <laughs> you know, like burn my I feel like they burn themselves out doing. Hey, that. man, you're going to Sade yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and by by that, like you for some reason, you remind me of Sade. And the reason why I say, and when I say you're going to Sade yourself, you probably going to get to a point where we probably going to see you like only every five or 10 years. That's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That's the man. goal for sure. So don't, so don't saturate the game with, Absolutely. with, 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 with ex, you know, overextending yourself. Mm-hmm. 10 yourself days in, in Latin America, where are you going? We're going to Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Brazil. And Have it. you been to those places before? Everywhere except for Chile and Brazil. Oh my God, man. I went yeah. to Brazil. Did you love it? Oh, I loved it over there, man. I'm excited to I, go. I, went to go I heard see, it's a lot like Colombia, so I'm excited. I went to go see a UFC fight over there. UFC okay. in Brazil. I was like, oh my God, man. <laughs> you know, I wanted to take my wife over there with me, but for some reason she uh, ducked out on me. She didn't want to oh. go? Ah, oh. to Brazil. That's crazy. I was like, man, you sending me to the booty capital. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you doing? You know? <laughs> but no, nah, and, and is, is it crazy that you get a chance to experience these places on your talent? Yeah, I'm really excited to go because Brazil is like one of my greatest fan bases. They're so like they're they're, the, they're just one of the greatest fans in the world for everybody. I feel like so I feel like it's gonna be a lot of fun to be able to finally perform music for them. But you doing ten? You doing four different locations in ten days? Oh, so you mm-hmm, don't even yeah. have like really unpack and like and really go CC? It's Lollapalooza. It's Lollapalooza. Oh. Yeah, so that's what it is. So uh-huh. it's like it's like two weekends essentially. Uh, oh, so so do you travel it back and forth? I don't think so. Oh, okay. No. All right. I think we end in. I believe we end in Colombia, and then I and then I come back here. To Coachella, get ready for Coachella. Lollapalooza. Then you say you do your North American tour. Yeah. And when does your North American tour not not when it began? When does it stop? A uh, guess to me. Uh, I think it's in. It's in May. Oh my lord. Yeah, it's it in May. It starts in May. Yeah, I believe it starts in May. Maybe like the last days of April. And then it's only like four and a half weeks or something like that. And so let's just say by, let's say April, let's say worst case scenario, it's over by July, Mm -hmm. August. Then you're done touring for the year unless you want to go do like a spot or something like that. I'm, I'm done touring for the year unless there's this other tour that might be in the works. Um, it would be a co-headline tour with somebody. I heard that. So who, who I'm not going to say it. Okay. <laughs> Write it down. I'll say it. Write it down. <laughs> that way you won't break is no it, contracts. It's in the works, but I might I might do that. I might not. So I'm cool with sitting out the rest of the year as well. So what do you do when you so-called sit out for the rest of the year? Well, I am also getting ready to drop my next album, which is going to be the Latin one. So are you writing and... I'm done with that one. Okay. Damn. Yeah, I'm finished. So I just have to shoot music videos and content and the artwork and stuff. I have to do that. And then I'm actually also working on the album that comes after that. So. And this is all you? Yeah, all me. And so when you say you're not going to tour, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean you're off. It does, For the rest though. of the year. Really? Mm, essentially, yeah, it does. Yeah. So what will you do? Will you... I'll like be... take taekwondo classes, like, <laughs> like what do you, you say? What now? Is that a cooking show or yeah. something? Yeah, right. Ooh. I'll be what you know, writing, writing my next album, getting, um, getting yourself out, together. You know, yeah, getting myself together. I grow little vegetables in my garden. Oh, that's dope. Do you I cook? Have, but yeah, I cook. I cook pretty much every day. I have bunny rabbits. Oh. I have a cat. You ain't cooking none of them rabbits, right? No, no, oh, no we're there. not cooking the rabbits. <laughs> yeah, I just want people. I, I wasn't asking for me. It's just that sometimes, you know, yeah. there's some ignorant people out there. Yeah, yeah, because, we don't want people to. Yeah, because yeah, it rolled on. Them. You was like, oh, I cook. I have bunny and rabbits. And then all of a sudden, they cut up those two <laughs> wow. pieces. Yeah, they're like, oh, together, turn it she into cooking bunny else. rabbits. Exactly. Yeah. We know how that goes. So if we were to come to your house, which I know we're not invited, but if we were to come to your house, yeah, she like me. You know what I'm saying? Like. Like, babe, we coming to your house. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would be the meal if you were to cook? Um, it depends what y'all like to eat. I make food. I make like mostly like what you know the stuff that my boyfriend likes to eat. Um, 
What, but, fried chicken and rice? No, I'm just, no, no, I'm just no. he lives like casseroles and like, I'm not going to get into all this stuff. You don't eat he, green bean casserole, do you? No, no, okay, no, Okay, no, cool, because no. she does. <laughs> yeah. It's good. She brought that, she brought that <laughs> yeah. shit up here one day and made us have to eat it, man. It was a, but thank then, you for that. Yeah, it was yeah. beautiful. I, I enjoyed it. Thank though. you. I can't even front. I can't even front. So, so you'll cook him I casserole. Cook, I could cook, uh, yeah, I could cook a large array of things, I would like to say. So it just depends on which y'all are. And you have a for. vegetable garden at your crib? Yeah, I have a vegetable garden. That you tend to? Yes. I heard yeah, that. It's nice. It's really therapeutic. Yeah. Do you smoke? Uh, I'm actually sober 10 months, but I'm excited to start smoking again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably like on my birthday, I would like light my first one. Really though? Yeah. You will be I'm, high I'm as waiting for I'm waiting for like something really big to celebrate and then I'll do so it. So you know that if, if you're not smoking, it's not indefinite. You know you're coming back. I'm going to smoke again, but I'm not like, you know, when I was growing up, I used to smoke every single day. Right. So I just had to show myself like I'm not dependent on anything. What you made know? you put it down? Was it that yeah, so-called it was just, challenge to yeah, yourself? It was just me. Like, I've never spent money on weed. It's always just been around me. Mm-hmm. Um, same with, like, liquor. So for me, it was just like, let me show myself that I'm strong enough to be like, right. nah, I'm good. Did you know that you'll look up and it'd be 10 months later? No, honestly, yeah. it went by really fast. <laughs> it went by really fast. Do you drink? I don't drink anymore. I'm 10 months completely so, sober. Oh, oh, oh yeah. okay. Damn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard that. And I'm around people, you know, my boyfriend does is in like nightlife, you know, he does a lot of shows, clubs mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm around people that drink all the time and um I definitely am used to like now getting those weird looks when people try to pass me a drink and I'm like, No, I'm good. They're like Damn drink. They're I'm like, like you're, no, you're not I'm in good. the business? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy though. But you know what? Unless you really do it on your birthday, you probably may say, you know what, let me make it a calendar year now. Right. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. Yeah. I wanna go a full year. I'm almost a full year. And um, after that, we'll see. Once it's something oh, really Oh, so yeah, by the time your birthday comes, you are a full calendar be, year. I easy. will be a full year by then, yeah, like over a year. Yeah, mm-hmm. watch me read like, oh, man, she got so drunk, she passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm going to drink again unless it's like, you know, I might have like a glass of champagne, a glass of rosé. I saw how you light. had your pinky out, too. Go ahead, you know, Callie. like, yeah. keep it classy, keep it classy. But um, actual like hard liquor, I think it's like a hard no. Was me. it a challenge for you or did you find yourself doing it too much? Like, I'm, um, I'm just going to stop because I don't need it. Or did you feel like no, I need it, to stop No, when this? it came to drinking, I actually haven't, I actually didn't, um, I pretty much got alcohol poisoning when I was like 17. And mm-hmm. after that, my body like repelled it. When I would try to drink, I would literally like mm-hmm. just immediately it would come up. So it was not, it was not something that I wanted to do anymore. And um, I essentially how I said like I just felt like I was doing it because it was around me people were passing it to me right in the place to be type of stuff mm -hmm. too and it comes with the vibe yeah and I just seen too much negative things you know people getting violent people getting you know turning into people that they're not off of liquor and it just it just turned me off of liquor Mm -hmm. honestly and that's since I was young you know like being around you know Latin culture is very much like we're always partying we're always like you know getting fucked up so um, seeing that from a young age, it always just kind of like turned me off from it. So I stopped being into drinking. We haven't stood side ago. by side. How tall are you? I think I'm five, six. And five, a half. six. Do you feel like growing that drinking also stunts your growth? Be, not- and the reason why I'm asking, how tall are you, Louie? Five, four and a half. Yeah, and he drinks a lot. <laughs> so do you so- think that if he didn't drink as much, that he probably would have been five, eight, five, nine, possibly? <laughs> Who knows? I mean, who really knows? Mm, can you write a song about it? Little short king anthem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Write him an anthem. You know what I'm saying? Because you got, you, we got. I don't want no short, short man. Yeah. We got yeah. short people. <laughs> got no reason. Yeah, write him an anthem. So much short people hate. Yeah, we yeah, need to yeah, uplift man. our short we, people. You know, or or, or or turn it to change the narrative, man. Yeah. Where we all want to be short. She yeah. hires short people, so I think we're good. Right? Oh yeah, you got little homies out there that's little, yeah. but they also girls too. Oh you know yeah, what I'm saying? little ladies too, man. You know what I'm saying? You probably not as tall as uh, let's not make this about you let's not make this about, about you me, let's see when we're done we'll go out there we'll line everybody up let's see, <laughs> yeah. let's see what's really going on and then we're gonna do like squid games the youngest one we're gonna kill him oh, the smallest one the shortest one no that's, oh okay so I'm alone I don't know if that's bro. a good idea I'm alone alright do you watch TV yeah I do do you, do, do you watch <laughs> scripted TV or do you watch like first 48 and stuff like that hmm uh, well, I grew up off of, um, you know, like I love New York, mm. so oh, I do love, I show. do love those little toxic reality <laughs> shows. Yeah. So it was a lot. I think it's she probably got Zeus TV and everything, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Well, it's, somebody, it's somebody else's account, but it's definitely in, in my TV. I'm not paying for it. I'm not paying for it. Would you Would you do TV. a reality show like if they wanted to do like the? Hmm. The Kelly and 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 Don Oliver, you know no, Don Oliver show. No, because we're so private. Yeah, I don't you think don't we would let ever let in. people into our lives like that. 
but you know it's funny to watch it's funny to yeah. watch for sure yeah, we love we love like the um like all that all that like married at first sight and like people <gasps> just you know people just yeah. taking a leap and like marrying complete strangers it's, yeah it's 90 day fiance hey, 90 day fiance <gasps> like, what was my man the dude with the little neck oh ed i loved him man oh. The yeah. Show yeah. Oh man. He's a mess. Yeah, we need to find a new good show, but it's always nice to just like on a Sunday or like so when you get a little bit of time, check in with the show. It's just Did you watch relaxing. the Chris Rock uh stand up? I didn't watch it. I haven't oh, watched it. Yeah, it's crazy. It was good? Yeah. I, I want you when you get a chance, watch it. I want you to watch it. Okay. And then I want you to turn in a five page report. <laughs> in I saw space. it. I saw it on the little Netflix screen, but I didn't But you're so busy doing you though, right? Yeah, it's only every once in a while that we really like check in. We we um um, we always spend our weekends together, and, but usually by the end of the day, we're so tired after like eating dinner. Do y'all live together? Yeah, we do. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. That's why you don't want us at the house either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's dope. Yeah. I live with my wife. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that, did you? No. You figured? But I, 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 you know, I think that's the way to be. I think yeah, yeah. I live with my it. wife and I have two kids, man. So as I live with should. them as well. I love you it. You know what I'm saying? And my yeah. daughter, my son's very talented. Oh, my daughter, she writes as well. You know what I'm oh, saying? Beautiful. So she'll write her own verse for the album that y'all do together. Right. right so right, you don't right, have to right, worry right. about that. <laughs> what do you think about, like, with you writing so much, but you do small collabs? You know what I'm saying? It's not mm-hmm. like you got, you always full of something. How do you pick who you want to collab with? It's really just about you know if I again. yeah if I if I really like the song and I really want to be a part of it and you know I think the artist is cool I'll jump on it. Who's on your wish list? I, I, honestly, share. I don't have like collaborations that I want to do anymore. I heard that. Yeah. Damn, you are a very simple person. I am. I, I love. Am. That. I always tell when In people ask me like, world. "What do I love to eat?" I'm always like, sim- "Like rice, beans, and egg on top." Like I'm very simple. I heard that. You yeah. know, it was a pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you too. I've, like real talk, mm-hmm. dude. Thank I you. really enjoyed your energy. Thank you. Yeah, and and you. God willing, I hope that you'll get a chance to come back and hang out. Thank with you. Us. I'm sure I will. Yeah. All righty. Yeah. And, and once again, if you see us at Coachella, say hi to us. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because we're gonna be there. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Kali no, Uchi's in the name. <laughs> where did the, real Ooh. quick, where did the name come from? Kali Uchi's, well, yeah. my real name is Carly Marina Loaiza. And yes. so, Bless like, you. Carly Marina. Oh, that was your name. <laughs> oh, my bad. Okay. okay. So, Carly Marina, people would just call me Carluchis, Carlo, Carlota. They would make little, like, nicknames for Carly, basically. So, Carluchis was, like, a main nickname that I used to get called when I was uh, little. So, I just took the R out. Caliuchis. Gotcha. Did you have wow. any other so-called names before you arrived at Caliuchis? Uh no, that no. was always no. I always just I just wanted the name to be very unique. I wanted to make sure that there was no one else that had that name. So I looked up: is there anyone else named Kali? There's no one. Um, Uchis obviously it wasn't a name that anyone was using. So um, that was how I determined to use it. That there was like, no way that anyone could. How have that long name. have you been Kali Uchis? Since I started, since I first started wow. putting music out, yeah. From okay. The, from the very beginning. Okay, so you knew what your destiny was. I have thought about changing my name before. From. From from Caliuchis, yeah. I have thought about changing my Not name. Not now that you you're known know and there's equity yeah. in the name. I have thought about changing my name before, absolutely, yeah. Even now? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have the name locked it's in just, your head? You know, I I just live like a new beginning. Like it just it just feels like it has so much <laughs> baggage to great. it at this point. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's too much like it get off of me. Get off of me. <laughs> I love that. Louis yeah. is about to have his first baby. Yep. He's about to have a son. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. If you don't change your name. Uh huh. And you know the name. Mm-hmm. Is it a name that Louis could name his right, son? Maybe I'll just slip you a little paper. Yeah, and let me get a little paper. Yeah. yeah, I always have little name ideas. So. Because at the moment, what is it like? Boston baked bean. You yeah. got one name. Chargers. <laughs> uh, Chargers is another uh, name. Raiders. Raiders. Bruce Bruce Bruce. He, okay. he, he wanted his the girl want to name it La Raider. <laughs> La Raiders or something. It was, it was something. What's the What's the name if you go to change it? Um. Who Share that with us. Know? Nah, nah, nah. Because nah. maybe when they actually do it, you know, then it could be a surprise. Hmm? Yeah, it'd be a surprise for everybody else. We'll hold it. Okay. No, no, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. No, right. no. Oh, she wasn't going to tell us anyway. Mm, no, but, I wasn't. But it felt very empowering when I felt yeah. like I was playing when I said, don't do it. Right, right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. that way people would be like, oh, yeah, like, she was about to tell them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you I, know? Yeah. And do, do me a favor. Would you tell us when, <laughs> when, when everything goes off, would you share it with us and let us hold it? Maybe. See, there Who it knows? is, man. Thank you. you. Know? There it is. She trusts us. Who knows us. what yeah. the future holds? Yeah, maybe. I don't know what the future holds. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, looking around like, uh, wait, 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 wait. did this dude just have a seizure or a stroke? Like, uh, the best was the finger tapping. Yeah, and she was like, uh, is he going to be all right? She was like, Charlemagne ain't never did this, huh? <laughs> Kelly Uchis, thank you for coming thank, into thank the neighborhood. Thank you for having me. Great time. It, it was our pleasure. Thank you for thank your energy you. and thank you for your time. Believe that. Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy.